When I say space food, you think of space ice cream. It's Neapolitan, it's tasty, and it's not actually space food at all. Hey space enthusiasts, Trace here for D News. You remember this stuff, the space ice cream that you got at the Lafayette County Children's Hands-On Science Museum store or whatever? Well, I hate to ruin your childhood, but they don't eat that crap in space. Food in space has been a concern since the beginning of space travel. John Glenn ate some food while orbiting the planet in Friendship 7 back in 1962. It was a tube of applesauce and xylish sugar tablets with water. Yuck. At the time, NASA had no idea what space would do to the human body and even if it was possible to eat food while in zero gravity. The result of this experiment? You can. Yeah. You can eat food. Though, the consensus was that food was pretty gross. Space food really reflects the era of the space travel. As NASA learns more and more, we see the food get better and better. The problem with food in zero gravity is that crumbs and pieces can float away when not managed. And these little bits can mess up the equipment and even be inhaled accidentally and cause choking. It's serious business. So we started with this gross tube food, but by the late 60s, we had freeze-dried food, which means food that was cooked, packaged, and quickly frozen and dried. So all you had to do was add water. By the Apollo mission, we had rehydrated food. It came in a bowl with a zipper on the top, had a little spoon, and the wet food would stick to the spoon so it didn't float away. As missions got longer, stretching into days and weeks, they couldn't eat out of a tube or a little bowl the whole time. Astronauts needed more calcium and vitamin D to keep their bones strong in microgravity and less iron because your body makes fewer red blood cells in space. If you eat too much iron, it would build up and cause health problems. Today, astronauts have 74 different dishes and 20 different drinks, including teas and coffees and all sorts of stuff. Astronauts can pick what foods they want at the Space Food Systems Laboratory in Houston. They rank foods from one to nine on flavor, texture, appearance, color, you know. And if it scores over a six, then it gets to go up on the space station, but only, of course, if it passes the dietary requirements. One of the favorite choices shrimp cocktail. The astronauts might even be required to maintain a hydroponics garden someday to grow their own food on extra long trips. Just like on Star Trek! Think of Mars length, you know, three to five years. At that length, making the food on Earth and shipping it up there isn't the hard part. It's making the food last long enough. So they heat treat it and they irradiate the packages and they do everything they can to kill the bacteria. Don't worry, the radiation isn't dangerous. It's cool, they checked. Aside from normal foods like brownies, mac and cheese, beef stroganoff, comfort foods. They can also take things like M&M's, granola, dried apricots, puddings, and cereals. The new Dragon capsule even has a fridge. So the International Space Station crew got some ice cream last trip. Blue Bell ice cream, mm-hmm, love that stuff. It's a lot better than that powdered ice cream crap from the museum store, believe me. Could you survive on space food for three to five years? Because before you answer, remember, there is no alcohol allowed in space, none. It is not allowed. Okay, find the comments section and let us know. Space is not the only place food innovation is happening. It's going on right here on D News. Anthony, Pam, Michael, and Nori are all doing this thing called Soylent. And this week they're only drinking this stuff. It comes out of a bin and they mix it up with water. It was made by this guy in San Francisco. I skipped this one because I like my tasty foods too much. They are doing this and they are doing daily diaries. Check them out on our Facebook page. Thanks for tuning in to D News, everyone. Bon appetit.